Hi, everybody. We're, we're, we're just coming up to time to break for lunch. Um, so if anyone would like to share out what you've been talking about, um, that would be great. And I'd like to remind everybody that if you still have a lot of things to talk about, we have another discussion period this afternoon. So we will have um, the, the community health team and the community working group talking to us after the lunch break um, and, and then another breakout session. So if you want to keep talking about events or case studies in those breakouts, you're quite welcome to also. Okay, Suzanne. Oh, and lunch is going to be in where the exhibit hall was, so we should see that at noon. Okay, so I'm really excited about what we did. We kind of pivoted instead of editing case studies, which we were planning to do. We um, realized that the filters for the case studies on the drupal.org case studies page were like way too many. There were like, I don't know how many, however many sticky notes you see there was the number of filters. And so we decided to collapse some of them and delete a whole bunch. Um, so we're gonna go, we're gonna make uh, issues for, <laughs> In the Drupal, there's a Drupal.org um, kind of issue queue, and we can make an issue there and hopefully get these clean taxonomy terms cleaned up and streamlined so it's easier to find case studies. We're also going to archive, just so everybody knows, controversial, probably people will be upset. We're going to we're going to decide to archive case studies older than. Yeah, seven, seven, Drupal, dot, Drupal 7 case studies and older to, art, to archive, and also case studies older than five years, four years, something like we're going to pick a, a number of years after which case studies will be archived. So tell your friends to blame, blame us. Also, another note, I was in contact with the uh, folks who run the Drupal Slack, and they are going to make the community summit group public, so we'll all be able to join it and share things there to take home and work on later. So our table was talking about sponsorships, and it, it, the discussion ranged really far and wide. Um, but some of the notes I wrote down was that, and, and one of the things that we came up with at the end was that sponsorship is obviously not just dollars. We need to get into the web community as a whole and get Drupal out. Because if we, one person at the table said, if somebody goes to a community college and they give a Drupal coding class, and that's 30 people in that class, or if it's just 15, and then those 15 people go to your local camp, you know, oh my gosh, that's 15 more attendees you have at your local camp that pay, or that may have come in, may know other people who want to sponsor, so it's like getting that message out about Drupal is a, is a good sponsorship strategy as well as getting in money. Um, some of the other things, we came up with was um, spreading out camps a little bit better, that they were spread out a little bit more before the pandemic, and now they've kind of bunched up a bit. So spreading them out so that sponsors have a little bit more of a, some of our bigger sponsors have the availability of funds throughout the year. Um, let's see, having a prospectus. Um, being forward about what you want. <laughs> this was a good point. Like if you send out an email for a sponsorship, say in the subject line that you're asking for a sponsorship. Don't beat around the bush. People don't have time to read through everything and be forward about that. Um, yeah, anything else I, that I should point out? Yeah. Yeah, sponsoring little bits here and there add up. 
Every time I hear about individual sponsorships, I think of um, a recent camp in Ottawa. Like a few years ago, I was an individual sponsor for a camp in Ottawa, and after the intro, um, the the platinum sponsor came up to me and said, do you realize your name was on the screen because it was the last thing they talked about? <laughs> and so the gold and platinum people had long gone, and, and my name stayed up on the screen for like <laughs> several minutes. <laughs> so, so you might just want to, if you're the person doing those intro remarks, um, yeah, acknowledge them, but not overly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pricing, folks. Avi or John, do you have anything you want to share back or, or somebody else? But I'm only picking on the people I actually know. Uh, yeah, so we talked about um, pricing and uh, there was a wide range of opinions from like free to some to some money for for camps. We talked about pros and cons to both approaches. Um, I think kind of where we, we netted out with with the majority of the group was um, that, you know, uh, Camps kind of need proceeds from tickets uh, in some instances for sustainability, but there should be a path to um, getting a free ticket, whether it's a scholarship or uh, some sort of discount or something, right? I mean, at the end of the day, the reason that everybody does this stuff is to um, further the community, is to educate folks and is to, you know, tell people about Drupal, right? So like that was kind of where, where we got to, I think. Um, it's definitely a tricky, tricky subject, you know, because everybody has different um, reasons for wanting to go in one direction or the other. All right, we had some, also had some pretty uh, wide-ranging discussions around the event platform. Um, actually, during the break, Avi had found, during his talk, he talked about uh, the importance of generating social media images, and he actually found a module that will do that, which is super cool, but it's like, doesn't have releases, and it's not Drupal 10 ready, so there's an issue we're gonna see if we can collaborate a little on and get that to a point where that could be part of the event platform. Uh, so the machine name is GSMI, but it's literally called Generate Social Media Image. So it's... We were talking about that for this. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, also talked about that idea of having a multi-year capability, and, and somebody was at the table who actually wanted to do multiple events per year, and we kind of realized that that same capability could actually potentially work for both of those use cases. So uh, definitely something to explore there. Um, had some discussion around potentially having, like in the, the demo we saw, generating time slots that are sort of like predictable, but you can sort of like customize the spacing of those to whatever you need. You can also customize them after the fact, so you can like generate a bunch of standard ones, and then like if you've got an all day contribution, you can make a separate time slot for that so that it can fit in and show on the schedule and all that kind of stuff. So that's maybe something to include in the demo, maybe document a little better so that um, people are aware of that and uh, the, sort of the flexibility that you have. And then I would say the last sort of major piece that we talked about was, was the need to do registration at some level. So probably a lot of camps today are using like an Eventbrite or something like that, but uh, Civi CRM was mentioned as one that could certainly be integrated, lots of good integration between Drupal and Civi CRM, so maybe we could even have like a submodule for people who want to go that route. Uh, to make it easy to set up um, or use like entity registration or some of the others. So, um, yeah, that was pretty much what we talked about. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to break for lunch now with all the other summit participants over where the exhibit hall was, and we'll come back at one o'clock. <laughs>